Welcome to the first tutorial in What's New in Motion 4. The first thing to notice is that Motion 4 looks very much like Motion 3, which is great because who wants to learn a new interface? I know I don't. But there are a lot of new features inside Motion 4, but you might have to dig around a little bit to find them. So the first thing we're going to look at is Reflections. So I'm going to go up to the Text tool, click on Screen, type something in, Motion Template and Digma. You can either hit the Escape key or go and click back on the arrow at the top left to get out of text mode. What I'm going to do is turn this all into 3D, and the easiest way to do that is just to add a camera. So I'm going to come up to the top where it says New Camera, click on this, click on Switch to 3D, and you can see your camera tools over here. The one I'm looking for is the middle tool, that's the Orbit tool, and I'm going to click and drag down slightly, and to the left, and now we've got a ground plane to work with, so the 3D scene is easier to work with. If you do this and you find you haven't got a ground plane, you might find it switched off, so you can get to that under the view menu at the top. Just click on that and come down and turn on 3D Grid. If I turn this off, you'll see it's actually very difficult to see where you are in 3D. So it's a good idea to leave it on. It won't go out when you make your file, it's just a working plane, so I'm going to turn that back on. Now we're going to use reflections, obviously something needs to be reflective, so what I'm going to do is create a rectangle and turn it flat to form a floor. So the first thing I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit, Apple minus on my keyboard to give myself a bit of space, and then I'm going to come up to the rectangle tool, which is up here, click on this. I'm just going to draw a full size rectangle. The first thing I'm going to do is just go out to my arrow tool, and I'm going to move my heads up display out of the way a little bit. Now it's sitting front on at the moment, so I'm going to come over to the properties tab, come over to rotation. I'm going to click the disclosure triangle, and I'm just going to reset all this to start off with. I'm just going to click in the X rotation and type 0, tab 0, tab. And then I'm going to come to the X rotation and type minus 90. And there's my floor. Now I need to move this downwards because you can see it's cutting through my text. So I'm going to come up to this tool here, which is your Adjust 3D Transform tool. And click on this. And then I'm going to click and drag. Now when you're moving in 3D, it's a good idea not to just click and drag because it can go anywhere in the 3D space you probably want to restrict the axis. When it turns yellow, I'm going to click and drag down, and now I'm moving it down only on the Y axis, which is the up and down. I'm going to move it just below the bottom of the G here. Now you probably find that it's not big enough whenever you're in 3D and you need floors, they nearly always need to be bigger. So I'm just going to click on the edges of this rectangle to make it a lot larger. So, there's my text, there's my floor, no reflections. By default, nothing is reflective. That's because it's pretty heavy on rendering, so you only want to turn it on when you need it. And the way to turn it on is just come over to your Properties tab, and if you move down, about halfway down, you'll see Reflections. So this is new. Shadows and Reflections are new in Motion 4. So all I have to do is click on Reflections to turn it on. And there's my reflection. Now this reflection is not very realistic. Reflection is usually a little bit blurred, and also you probably want it to fade out as it goes down here. So what I'm going to do is come back to my Properties tab, open up the triangle for Reflections, and you'll see down here there's a couple of things you can change, and one of them is Blur Amount. So I'm going to add a little bit of Blur, so let's blur that out a little bit more, that's a bit better, it doesn't stand out so much. The other thing I need to do is come over to Fall Off and turn this on. If I click on this, you can see that it's started to fade out at the bottom, but I really need to adjust it. So again, you can click this Disclosure Triangle and adjust the distance. The beginning distance is where it starts here, and the end distance is where it ends here. So I need to adjust the end distance so it comes back a little bit. So I just need to click on End Distance and reduce it down. And you can see on screen it starts to fade out the word Motion Template in the reflection. You get full reflection here, and then it starts to fade out. By the time it gets to the Motion Template, it's pretty much gone even take it down a little bit more. And when you're doing this, it's probably a good idea not to use a fluorescent green floor. It makes it quite difficult. If you come over to your heads-up display, I'm just going to move it over to this side. If you click on the green here, it opens up this window, and you can adjust it here if you want to. Or you can click on this triangle and drag around. I tend to do it this way. Now you'll find that if you drag on the left-hand side, that doesn't really matter which colour you select. The reflections just get lost. That's because the reflections are white, and so is the floor colour, really. There's not much colour in there. It actually stands out a lot better if you drag over to the right-hand side. So black's good, but it's a bit overpowering. So what I usually do is come in a little bit, 
the full black and then drag up and down just add a little bit of color so sort of a darkish blue works quite well what I need to is get to my text here so I could just hit X on my keyboard which is expose a for motion and then come down select my text down the bottom right often you'll see graphics where they put the text just underneath the floor and then slowly animate it up and the text comes up and so does the reflection and that's all you have to do to make that effect so that's the first tutorial on the new features of Motion 4. My name's Jerry Lear from motiontemplate.co.uk.